everybody. Hopefully you all know me by now. I'm Leo Feldman. Woo! Hi, Leo. Yay! Yeah. All right. All of you please know that after this talk, or actually sometime in the middle of this talk, we're going to eat these brownies. So that I think it's bad. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully there's not. I'll call the big one. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit, just a little bit about time travel. I don't know, like, the super huge mathematically in complex stuff, but we'll see if it's even possible to transverse time. It sounds a little far-fetched, but in this talk, hopefully we'll see some of the possibilities and if it's even possible or not. So let's start by discussing the dimensions of space that we are familiar with in regular everyday life. Imagine a car driving along like this straight road. The road is straight, and the driver might be in cruise control. Hopefully he's not asleep at the wheel, because it sounds like a very boring drive. Uh, the car is moving in one dimension in this situation. It's only moving forward, and it could move backward if it wanted to along this road. Now, let's say we want to expand this situation to three dimensions. We can have this car encounter a mountain. And to get up a mountain, you've got to go on a windy, twisty loop, up and down, forwards and backwards, left and right. And the driver can find his way through these three dimensions by going through the mountains. Now, let's introduce a fourth dimension. Relative to us, time is a two-way line just like the first three dimensions. However, unlike the first three dimensions, you cannot move uh, backwards and forwards in time unless you're just accommodated by the regular passage of time. Now, some people have wondered, mostly authors in the past have wondered if it's possible to construct a machine that allows you to build this tunnel through time so you can go in the direction you want, just like in regular space. <coughs> the most popular book in this genre is obviously The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, and in his book, time travel tend to be mostly forward, and we'll talk about that later. Uh, but scientists have even questioned this, and the main question that scientists ask is if it's possible to create this machine that can allow you to go forwards and backwards in time. Now to answer this question, we need to think about the three normal spatial dimensions again. Imagine a balloon, all right? So pretend you're like holding it in your hands, if you want. Uh, now feel like how smooth the balloon is, because balloons feel kind of smooth and normal. So this is how time feels to us. It's just smooth, there's no jumps. But, and it doesn't uh, run at different paces ever. But think again. You've got to feel that balloon a little bit more closely. If you rub it, you can like hear the friction, and you can feel the roughness. And if you look very close up at a tiny level at this balloon, you'll see that there's these irregular ridges. And if you look even closer, it could look like, like blobs of asymmetrical material lined up. Uh, some scientists believe, and I say some because Albert Einstein, the greatest genius who ever lived, did not believe this. Uh, they believe that this is actually how time actually is, where these, there's these little jumps in space-time. Uh, basically at the Planck level, which is 10 to the negative, or 10 to the 20th times smaller than a proton, which is really small, uh, Planck length is the smallest measurable length. So it's believed at this length that there could be these little rips in space in a, a plane called the quantum foam. And what makes up the quantum foam are these little tiny wormholes, which are the rips in space that I was talking about, that can jump in and out of existence. So some scientists, mostly like in philosophical debate, have theorized that one could use future technology that we haven't discovered yet to somehow enlarge these wormholes and make it so that a normal human can go through these little rips in time and space. So maybe it's possible that way to go forwards or backwards in time. Now, Stephen Hawking has said that he thinks this is impossible because if you know about a uh, feedback loop, which in normal life, it's like the sound goes through a microphone, comes out the speakers, goes back in, and just becomes larger and larger and larger until you hear like a huge squeak. In the, con in the relative to wormholes, radiation would go in these large wormholes, come out, go back in even larger, and destroy the wormhole almost instantaneously. So basically, it would destroy itself, and a human would not be able to go through this wormhole. But is this to be expected? So let's look at a scenario. Imagine a mad scientist, maybe named Leo, is <laughs> crazy. He decides to enlarge one of these wormholes so that he can move in the time dimension go back in time and shoot the younger Leo, who is still in the process of plotting his vital scheme. He's trying to create a paradox, of course. Now, the, one that I'm, the paradox that I'm talking about in this case is known as the grandfather paradox. It's the exact same situation, except it's when a grandson or a granddaughter goes back in time to kill their own grandfather, thus 
us, how would they exist to even go back in time and shoot their grandfather in the first place? But nature, it seems, would not allow this type of situation to happen. It's been theorized by some scientists, again, in philosophical debate, that there's a theory of compossibility that says that nature will do something in order to prevent these paradoxes from occurring. So maybe if the mad scientist Leo tried to go back in time and tried to shoot Leo, his gun would jam. Or maybe when he steps out of the, the wormhole, he's just so shocked that his experiment worked that he tripped and fell and died. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so basically we see that it's impossible for these paradoxes to occur because that wouldn't make sense. So and the wormholes wouldn't work because they'll just explode. So is it even possible to go back in time? Like what can we use? What kind of machine could we use to go back in time? Well, fortunately, I have devised an experiment <laughs> to see if this is possible. I kind of copied it, so I didn't really devise it, but I have these invitations that welcome time travelers to the time of 810. It's 808 right now, so unfortunately my timing was a little bit off. But, so basically the text says, welcome time travelers. Come celebrate a new semester with us and see how college students live in the past. Food will be provided, the brownies. So, no need to send an RSVP into the past. We will accommodate for however many show up. And I put the time at 8, 10, PM, and 2010, whatever time I have to use in the future, I don't know. So January 13th, 2013 AD, or ACE, Gregorian calendar. Try to put as many specifics just in case they don't know what I'm talking about in. And I also put the latitude and longitude just in case this place is completely wiped off the face of the earth so they know where to be. Uh, six significant digits in the minutes. <laughs> yeah, I actually I looked up the uh, latitude and longitude of Brown Dorm. It's actually kind of hard. I, it was hard to find it out. I found it on the site. Oh well. Uh, well, it's almost eight ten. So our guests should be arriving really soon in about.
this time dilation phenomena is exactly what we can look at for human time travel. Hypothetically, in the future, we can build a train that encircles the entire Earth. And imagine if we could get this train near the speed of light. Like, we could have it almost get to the speed of light. It, that means it would circle Earth seven times per second. Now, it's easy to see why time on this train would slow down. Imagine this situation. The train is going almost the speed of light. Now, somebody on the train thinks they're going to be a smart ass and walk a little bit faster on the train so they can break the speed of light. Right? That would make sense. They would add their speed to the speed of the train and therefore break the speed of light if the train is almost going the speed of light. But on the train, time slows down just enough to where that would be impossible to observers off of the train. So if somebody, uh, so basically if somebody rode on this train for a week, then they could get off this train and suddenly find themselves 100 years in the future. Now, we probably aren't going to build a massive train on Earth that can reach the speed of light. It would most likely have to happen in space, where there's not a lot of friction, where there's a lot of space to get up to that speed. Uh, what is cool about a spaceship that can reach near light speeds is that passengers can actually reach the edges of the universe in a human lifespan because if they approach the speed of light, the passage of time on the ship could reach almost zero. Now, unfortunately, they couldn't come back, back to Earth and tell everybody about it because everyone would be dead by then because that would take forever to get to the edge of the universe and come back relative to the people on Earth. But on the ship, the time would be slowed down just enough to where they could experience that entire trip. Uh, now, high speeds, or sorry, real legitimate research is actually being done on time travel. A subatomic particle called a pi meson has an average lifespan of 25 billionths of a second. So, scientists at uh, the CERN laboratory in Geneva, Switzerland, devised an experiment where they put these pi mesons in a particle accelerator to accelerate them to near the speeds of light. And they actually find that these particles live 20, or 30 times as long. So another way to think about this is that these particles actually like go into the future. So we've actually sent particles into the future. So the next step is us. But high speeds aren't the only way to slow down time, even though it's the best way to do it. You can also, or matter out also drags on time. All matter drags on time. Supermassive objects, like the Earth, actually drag down time. Another kind of time machine that can be invented is a spaceship that uh, enters orbit at the right speed and right angle around the black hole so it can remain in orbit for a long time. Uh, and this black hole would slow down time just enough so that uh, the travelers on the spaceship would actually be transported forward in time. But unfortunately, for human time travelers, uh, it is kind of inefficient because the amount of time they spend traveling is only the amount of time they jump forward in time kind of slow. But uh, if someone were to jump off the spaceship, in just a cool scenario, into the black hole, uh, generally what happens, or what's been theorized, is if somebody's in a black hole, they get spaghettified, which is basically the, the gravitational force on their feet is so much greater than the gravitational force on their head, so they like stretch out into like this long spaghetti strand. But that's only what would happen in perspective of the person falling into the black hole because he would be closer to this ginormous mass that drags on time. The people in the spaceship would see him approach the black hole, or if they could see into a black hole, it's obviously not possible to see into a black hole, but if they could somehow see into it, they would see the guy fall slower and slower and slower into the hole until he like stops in time with this terrified look on his face. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. So there are actual legitimate ways for human forwards time travel. Most scientists believe that Time, backwards time travel is impossible. But that could be a good thing too. We don't want to be creating paradoxes. Uh, someday it could be possible to skip multiple generations with forward time travel. Of course, it's a one-way ticket, but if any of you are into that kind of thing, it could be a fun ride. Are there any questions about this topic? David. <laughs> okay. So I just take my deep part. Uh, what would happen in the case of a, a, a rotation? Say like uh, I was uh, rotated on my center of mass, then the edges of my head and toes would be uh, traveling at a faster speed than those near the center. Then would those uh, ends like be uh, uh, be like younger, and you know like the thing near my 
center of mass be older? Uh, no, it would not, she because would your die. observation is still it's the same. Like that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not about certain parts of your body being younger and older. It's about like relative experiences. So like relative to you, uh, your entire body would be getting older, or you would be staying about the same age, but relative to the people uh, outside, like your time would barely move at all. So it's, it's not a question of like heads and feet. It's more of like your experiences. The gravitational force is the heads and feet thing. Oh, well, what about like an inanimate object, like a steel steel bar? Well, in, in our in our reference frame, if we saw a steel bar fall into a black hole, we would never like be able to sense it reaching the center. But the steel bar obviously does not have its own observation, so we, we don't really know what happens. device used to communicate with ships that are traveling the speed of light that may be like far, far away, right? Yeah. How would such a thing conceivably work? Or is it like impossible? It's, it's impossible according to our current knowledge. Because just the, the speed of light is the, the fastest limit ever. So if a ship was like millions of light years away, then the signal wouldn't be able to reach them. So unfortunately, according to our current knowledge of the laws of physics, we couldn't do that. Now in hypothetical future situations, where we can make wormholes that have uh, been theorized to just blow up when you make them bigger, we could send signals through that if somehow we found a way to like, prevent feedback from going through. There, uh, there have also been discussions of like somehow bending like the space-time fabric that uh, Einstein envisioned as being kind of smooth and folding that in on itself so you could technically send signals through a shorter distance. Uh, it could be done that way, but according to our laws of physics, we, we don't know how to do explain it to you this way. Imagine a light clock to where, uh, let's say a tick is the time it takes the light to go here and back. So let's imagine like there's a mirror here and a mirror here, and like the light just bounces back and forth. All right, so let's say one tick is here and back. All right, so if you're in a still reference frame, as the light bounces here and back, you see the light going C, which is the speed of light, which is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So let's say, you want this light clock to be moving, okay? If you are moving with the light clock, you don't see any difference. You just see the light bouncing back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you're not in the reference frame, if you're standing still and the light clock is moving away, like to the side, like that, mm -hmm. you see the light going in a tri, like a, it's going on uh, a hypotenuse of a triangle, right? Yeah. That's actually a longer distance, and in all reference frames, the Light's cool because the speed of light only goes three times ten to the eighth meters per second in every reference frame. So it would just, take longer yeah. for the light to go that one tick. Yeah. It would take longer for it to do that than that in your reference frame. That's why it's so important about reference frames. Because if you were in that reference frame, you would just be moving with it and would see any difference. Yeah. So that's one explanation. <laughs> Watch it in the room. Where are you going to put the invitations? Said on this invitation, come back to this time in this place. Did you send it in an email? No, because now no, he's no, going to no, leave it like in a secret spot. Yeah, it's, 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 physic it's, it's physically They have a time capsule on so this campus. The likelihood that somebody will see these in the future is pretty high. Is it kind of small? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the likelihood that somebody will see it after they've invented time travel? I think mean, we should take out a bit. We don't really. So if time travel is going to happen, it won't happen like that far in the future. 
And we can assume that humans will last for like well, maybe. Do like you think maybe if you decide where the time code, like said, I will put well, them here, like it's well, not like in the movie Bill and Ted's Great Adventure, or whatever it's called? I do love that alter reality. Oh, yeah, I had one more question. It's funny, I think I watched it. Fantastic. I have one more question. Alright. Is there a connection between time travel and entropy? 